Hey, Turbo. How you doing, baby? Look at you with your big boy collar on, all grown up, so big. Such a big boy, you too, Toby. You don't even have your collar on right now, you're naked. Why are you naked, Toby? Because he had a bath last night. Have to let him dry out all the way. There are dog toys everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. Turbo found his uh, toy basket, which I had up until recently been keeping locked away where he couldn't get to it and then giving him the toys when it was time to let him play with them, try and keep it mixed up that way. But yeah, he found it. And he's just been having the time of his life with all of the various toys. <laughs> hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Left off last week's vlog, uh, insinuating that I was going to do some Christmas decorating, but I decided to hold off on that from the channel at least for another week or two, because I know some people just aren't ready for it yet, and that's fine. Not a big deal. I've already done an awful lot, but try and keep the holiday decor to a minimum for at least another week or two. I just like to get a head start so that I'm not messing with that stuff around Thanksgiving and just have fun on Thanksgiving and not have to jump right into it right afterwards and just relax during December. Enjoy the festivities. That's why I get going on that somewhat abnormally early. Look at the damage. Yeah, we'll go outside in a minute and have a look at the cold damage. That's why all the plants came in. Ended up having four nights in the 20s. I think I got down to 26 one night and it was like six nights total where it was around freezing and yeah, just not great. Also, new mic. Picks up every breath. I'm not a fan of it, but it's what I'm going to use for this vlog to test out and do some other things with. So, so I apologize if things are breathy. Breath, breathy, breath, what is it? I'll do my best to not breathe for y'all. How's that? Did pick up a few new plants. Look at this one. Does anybody know what it is? Because I have no idea. It's a beautiful home decor. I don't know. I got it because I don't know, it was Halloween and it reminded me of old Greg. Has that like swampy vibe to it. From looking at it, I think it's some sort of epiphyllum, but I don't know for sure. It's mostly this growth right here. Like that's very epiphyllum like and so are the rest of so some sort of weird curly swampy cactus of some sort. I, I haven't even bothered Googling and I was like, well, I'll just ask people in the vlogs. Somebody will know. Also have some things over here that you'll see in a few weeks for other things. There's a Clarence Pothos. Don't know if it's an Enjoy or a, uh, what's that other one? Pearls and Jade. I know one of them is supposed to have more variegation inside the foliage than the other. I don't, I don't even care. I just got it because I thought it was pretty. And it's a little bit rough. So I think it needs to put on some more growth before I really try to identify. I think it looks like an Enjoy, except for with this leaf right here because that has some green inside of the white. I don't know. It was pretty, and so I grabbed it. That's all there was to that. I also <laughs> put the curtains up and the light diffuser because if you remember last year, you, maybe you don't, maybe you're new year. Around late October into November, the sun comes through this window in just a blinding way, and it makes it almost unbearable to be in the kitchen for like four or five hours a day. And that sun gets low, it's just boom, it's right in your eyes. So I have some shears that I toss up here and I put a light diffuser up there and it helps. It doesn't eliminate the problem altogether, but it helps an awful lot. There are some lights behind the shears just for the holidays. I do a whole thing here with garland and gingerbread houses, but I'm not, I haven't gotten around to that yet. I just wanted to make sure that those went up before the, nobody asked, we, we just, you know, catch it up with what's going on and what's different. This shouldn't be here right now. <laughs> it's new. Plugged it in to see if it worked. I'm not crazy about it, it kind of creeps me out. We'll talk about that some more when it's time in a week or two. Okay, I bet you guys want to go outside. You want to go outside? Outdoors? No enthusiasm from anyone? Really? Here goes Plunkin. There she is. Hi, baby girl. How you doing, sweetie? How you doing, honey? You pop by to say hi? Oh, you're going to go up? You going to come up the rest of the way? I know she thinks that there's about to be a cookie party. That's what's happening right now. She's waiting for a cookie party. We're not, oh, did you hear cookie party? It's not time yet. You didn't do anything. You gotta earn those cookies. Okay, give me some money. Thank you. Cookie, good boy. Cookie, oh, I forgot to make him sit down. And look who just showed up. Okay, you too, pumpkin. Cookie. Now, do you wanna go outdoors? Outdoors? Yes? No? We need to go out there. There are things that need to be done. You have to let me open the door, Turpo. Goodness. 
That was all kinds of naughty. He gets away with things when I have the camera in my hands. I'm always off my game. He's always supposed to sit before he goes, yeah, it's fine. So a lot has changed since the last vlog. Fall happened. Like it really happened. As I mentioned, it was super cold for like six or seven days and then it warmed right back up. I've got to play 81 one day. It's like 65 right now. I was so excited to show this tree to the vlog. It's a sugar maple. And as of yesterday, it was just stunning. But some wind came through and well, now it's naked. There's one all the way over there in the neighbor's yard that's still really pretty, but it's not, not over here. What about that one? Nope. Oh, those leaves are gone. The ground is very pretty. Looks nice. Very windy. Very extremely windy. That might make this vlog a little difficult. Oh, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? If we can even see it with the light on it. Beautiful carpet. Gorgeous orange leaves. Love it. Fall is so pretty. Something I never would have thought I would have said just a few years ago, but well, Things change, mindsets change, and I'm kind of into the seasons. Didn't used to be, but I don't know, sort of looking forward to some cooler weather. The fall color on the clethra. Can you even see it? The sun is right in my eyes. That beautiful golden color. When I did the video on this ruby spice clethra, I mentioned that they have nice fall color, but couldn't see it in person. Love it. That is so nice. Beautiful and golden. There's a ditch in here. Oh, another ball. So I don't really have an objective to this video. So I'd walk around, we could look at some of the cold damage, maybe talk about some microclimate stuff, and then I should go ahead and get that space over there by the hot tub cleaned up and do something with that. Don't wanna forget that those are in there. So you may notice I did not move everything inside with a lot of the plants that are in the ground. Well, I really should just say the cannas, the alocasias, I usually go ahead and let the frost do their thing with them, and then I'll lift them up from the ground down below and store them dormant for the winter time. The cold took care of the majority of the heliconias. Took as many inside as I could, but that's, you know, just what happens. 26 degrees for a few days. They're not gonna stand a chance with that. Roses are still blooming and looking nice. There's some more on the other side that I'll show you here in a bit. Don't see any damage over here to the gingers that got planted a few weeks ago. They look totally fine. The majority of the damage was, well, on the more tropical type plants. So the baju bananas, They've crisped up quite a bit than the uh, bikini teeny color cases. And look at that. It's just shattered. They've looked better, but you know, the ones that are on the inside, they look okay. I'm not upset by any of the damage because this is just that time of year. They'll die down on the ground, come back next year. It's all good. When we have our first frost, it's such a great opportunity to get out and see where the damage was and where the damage wasn't. So like with these gingers, most of them, look pretty good. They have some crispiness on them, but the ones that are closer back to the house look totally fine, which is to be expected. There's gonna be more shelter and protection up against the building or up against the wall. And the ones that are more exposed, like this one right here, not looking as hot. Again, totally fine, it's that time of year. The bikini teeny colocasias that are in this corner right here underneath the banana, look at them. They're fine, with the exception of <laughs> a couple of leaves that were hanging out pretty far over the patio gonna be more exposed the further they hang out from being closer to the house and closer to the pavement. But the ones that are tucked in there more tightly look pretty good. They look a lot better than the ones down there. So just from looking at what I see right here, I know, okay, I have a warm spot here, probably more so like right from this spot swooping around to that window that sticks out over there. Things to remember when planning the garden, right? So if there's something that's hardy to zone seven, but I'm in zone six, and this would be an ideal place to try those out, assuming that it fits all the other things, like can it handle scorching afternoon sun up against the building with hot pavement? Will it just cook? That's neither here nor there. More just referring to temperatures here. The main clump of gingers, they suffered some damage. No shock there. And again, the ones that are closer to the house, they look fine. What I'm actually the most surprised about are the rulias down here, the Macho Morados. They look totally fine. In fact, one of them was still in bloom yesterday and it still has some buds on it that are completely undamaged. Cannot see my screen because of the sun, but hopefully you'll be able to see that. Would have expected those to have died back. Not necessarily the plant, the Rulia plant, because a lot of those are good into zone seven, but the flowers 
wasn't expecting those to hold on. That's cool. Maybe this plant will come back next year. I don't know. This entire space will get mulched very heavily. The gingers get cut back basically to the ground. Usually I'll leave a like a nub so I have a better idea of where they are, but that gets several bags of mulch and then the entire space tends to stay fairly warm over here. The snow melts first over here. That's the other thing. First frost, good time to pay attention to where those where the damage occurs and where you don't see frost in the morning. Those are the warmer spots and then the first snow. Where does it melt first? Those are good spots for plants that are more temperamental. We talked about that, all of this actually last year, but I thought it's a good time to remind people because it's that time of year. Have a look, help plan things out for next year. Know your microclimates and such. Petunias are still growing strong. No surprise there. They actually usually still keep doing their thing for me when temperatures get fairly chilly out. Portland Fraticasas. They're fine. Colocasia Maui Golds, not so much. The Hirsuta Heliconias, I reached in and got a clump of those to save for the winter time. The ones that are in here don't look too hot except for right towards the very center, but the Fraticasas, doing well. Wasn't really expecting that. I really probably should have, shouldn't I? Because I know that in parts of northern Florida and just a lot of coastal areas where it's like right on the border of 8B, 9A, that people grow these and sometimes they'll just die back in the winter and come right back. So with that in mind, you should know that they're more cold tolerant than would have thought. So I have hibiscus out here. I don't worry about them in the upper 20s as long as it's just for a few days. Even if they defoliate, it's not the end of the world because they'll just bounce right back and they tend to throw a little bit of a fit when I move inside anyway, so this just helps harden them off to being moved inside. Is Markia still out here doing fine? I'll probably leave this out until I don't I, well, I, I don't know if I could give like a time frame to when I would leave this out, but I think that when temperatures are gonna be consistently dropping into the 20s and if there's any forecasted precipitation along with that. It's a good idea to make sure that the soil's moist when there's a cold front moving in. It shouldn't be sopping wet, but the plant should be well watered. Dry soil loses its warmth a lot faster, which I know isn't what you would think, but there's more airflow through it. And anyway, that's more true for plants in the ground than in a pot. It gets complicated. I think you get what I'm saying. I'm not gonna let any snow or ice build up on it. That's what I'm going with. And a lot of it has to do with daytime temperatures too, right? So. If it's going to be in the 70s during the day, not as concerned about plants like the Bismarck palm. However, when it gets to a point when the highs are only going to be in the 40s and maybe 30s, that well, the, they're not really going to appreciate that. They could handle it for a little while, but there's no reason to force them to because I have a space where I can move them where it can stay much warmer. They need some warmth to rebound is what I'm saying. If they're not going to get that and that's not going to work out. And of course the windmill palms, mule palms have a Big Bird of Paradise back there, they're all fine. Plants again that I don't really worry about until I know that temperatures aren't going to be warming back up. Heck, I even have an extra Alpinia that I left out here just because I had three others and I didn't really think I needed to bring them all inside. It looks totally fine. So I'll go ahead and bring it in. It held on this long, may as well give it another shot, right? Although I really don't need any more of them. I bought two more over the summer and then divided each one of those up and then I had four and then I was like, I don't need four. I don't know why I divided them up. And here's one of those divisions, so yeah, we'll see. May as well give it a shot. Even the Dracaena reflexos that were put in here just as annuals this year, look at them. Totally fine. Like I said, it's with multiple nights in the upper 20s. They look good. Again, I don't think that would be the case if the temperatures weren't warming back up into the 70s and 60s. It's been more like 50s and 60s last few days. We had some nice warm days for a few days after that freeze. Oh, I forgot to take in the little fiddle. I knew there was something missing from inside the grow space. Well, it's it's all right. Looks okay to me. I mean, it doesn't look okay. That, that's not good. However, considering that cold, would have expected much, much, much more damage on here. I'm glad that I remembered that. The Eureka Palm was right here and had things somewhat blocked in. Also have the Lantana tree. I'm going to let that defoliate some more before it comes inside. It needs a big cutback. Look what the wind did. The wind just, I had it staked in, didn't do a good enough job. And there's an offshoot on this that I couldn't even see because of all the plants that were here. The freckles growing was right there. I didn't even notice that there's a growth coming out of here that goes all the way up there. So I need to cut that off of there. I actually, I need to do all kinds of things over here in this area. Mm, that's a little slippery. This spot went from looking absolutely beautiful to looking pretty rough. Hey, look at that. So sad. Look at that. 
Brand new tripod. Not brand new, only a few months old. Look at that. That's broken. Cool. Just be doing this first person like the good old days. Need to get this pot and put it on the, mm, that's a bad idea. I'm gonna set y'all down right here for a second. Enjoy that view of the side of the pot. There we go. It was a little bit slippy. Didn't want that falling out of my hands while I was doing things. This was a coleus. This plant did not appreciate the cold. Need to pull this planter down this way over this corner where that croton was. Open up the middle of things over, over in here. There we go. Now there's actually an entrance for the hot tub. The people have asked. I thought I'd talked about before, maybe not. The hot tub it went away to get fixed. It's back now. Yep, here it is. And now that it's cooled off outside, we'll actually be using it. I was gonna say I want to make the area look nice. I'm not really gonna be able to do much this time of year, but can at least tidy it up. Hmm. <laughs> I want to say I'm done, but I'm not. Things are still so messy. I don't see a reason to blow the leaves off yet because in the next day or so the rest of them are gonna come falling right down. That time of year where every little burst of wind blows the pine needles down and then they land on you and now I, I feel like I have bugs crawling all over me. I know that I don't. It's all in my head. So this is, this is, this will have to do. Not anything like it was before, but uh, that's not something I would expect from this space <laughs> considering it's, you know, November and looked its best back in September and October. Just going to keep getting colder. So I moved the more cold hardy plants over here. That windmill palm was already there. Put a Mediterranean fan palm right down here. Moved the big windmill palm over here. This plant did a good amount of growing this year, but look how scrawny it is. Because it's back there in the shade, you keep the windmill palms in a shadier spot, you get scrawny growth on them. I'm okay with it though. It's still a beautiful plant. I would prefer a thicker trunk just because in my mind, I feel like the thicker the trunk, the more cold tolerance they have, but it doesn't matter. I keep them in pots so I can move them in and out and not have to worry about the cold so much. The windmill palms generally stay out until it's going to be uh, between 15 and 10 degrees Fahrenheit for prolonged periods or if there's forecasted ice storms. I don't worry about snow so much with them. The snow just insulates and seems to protect them. The Mediterranean fan palm comes in at 20 just because they grow like snails in pots. Well, the way I grow it in a pot, it grows like a snail. So I do keep it more on the dry side. If I were to put it up on drip and really stay on top of some amendments and enriching the soil, they can actually grow fairly quickly, but that's not what I did. So didn't get much growth out of that this year, but I didn't expect to, because I would just let it hang out and be a drought tolerant plant. The Fetsia, I moved over here, it has some bird poop on it. I think this is an okay spot for it. It's going to get some shade from the sun with that palm frond above it. This did an okay amount of growing this year too. Look at the fun little, these like bulbs coming out of the middle. I assume that those are new growths and not flowers, but I've never really noticed them looking like that before. So there could be flowers. I really don't know. I haven't had one flower in a very, very, very long time. So I don't really remember what the protrusion looks like before they start to flower. I also put a rose over here. This is the Oh So Easy Paprika is an absolutely beautiful rose. It's like a glowing, like corally orange color, orangish pink. And then I have an oh so easy Italian ice over here. The, one of the reasons that I like roses is because generally they'll keep doing a bit of a show later into the season. A lot of places that have a more mild October, November, they'll usually keep on flowering. So that's one of the reasons that I even got this oh so easy paprika was because I wanted it over here, hot paprika is what that one is. Already to zone four, I believe, so it should be good in the container all winter. So this entire area here, I wish it was nicer to look at. I mean, I don't think it looks bad, but just in comparison, very different than how it was. But what I was going to say is this area, I think is going to have to become my new perennial shelter, probably. I used to use the tiki bar for that. I would drape some frost cloth over the top and let it hang down the back and just weigh it down with some bricks would make like a lean-to. Then I would stuff the more delicate perennials in there that needed to have just some shelter. But I don't, well the tiki bar's gone. And I don't, this thing I don't think is sturdy enough and really that spot gets pretty toasty over there. Even in the winter time I think the plants might cook. This will get, oh this spot might get too warm too. Whatever the case there may be a section of this where I drape some frost cloth over it and tuck more tender perennials underneath it when we get to that time. That probably won't be till like January. I have plenty of other space here along the wall where I can give that a try as well. Not something I have to figure out right now. You have the time of your life, Toby? You're such a good boy. 
You've been a very good boy, Turbo. Yes, you have. He's been so good. A very sweet, gentle puppy. Don't drink that. I need to dump that out. Went through the deck planters and cut out all of the sun impatience and the heliconias that were left inside of both of them. The Super Junior Vista bubble gums are still going strong. I shouldn't say they're going strong, but they're hanging on. So I figured I'd go ahead and leave them. This is that time where I'm going, oh, I wish I had put Creeping Jenny in these. I, not really, but I'll explain. The Creeping Jenny is somewhat evergreen here. So during the winter time, there'd be a beautiful cascade of nice green leaves coming down the front of that. Usually towards like end of February into March, they start to crisp up and die off and then they come back from the soil. But still, that would provide so much more interest. However, the Super Junior Vista bubblegum is so pretty that it's fine. This'll do. Wouldn't make any sense to plant any of these right now. It did cross my mind. I was like, I could go over to my Creepin' Jenny patch and rip some up and stick them in here, but they're not going to root in or do anything. So I don't, I don't think there'd be much point in doing all of that. <laughs> and I forgot to mention when talking about the microclimates, this spot over here. Pretty much untouched. I'm almost completely untouched, actually. There's some spots along the tops of these leaves, but I don't know if those are sun scorch or from the cold. So this spot got an okay amount of shade when the tiki bar was there, but you wouldn't think the tiki bar would have shaded things all that much, but it turned out it really did. When that got moved out, started to see more growth from the plants over here and more burning. This is a uh, Hedicium coronorium. Had it for years, never blooms, ever but survives the winters. I will be swapping that out next year with something that will give me some blooms. It doesn't seem to get up enough vigor after the winter cold to get to that point. Although now that it's getting more light, although I don't think it wants more light. This is really it for what I needed to do this week was just tidy the spot. It's not perfect, but like I said, I don't want to go through it and mess with the leaves when they're just going to keep falling. I kind of like to get it done in one big project. And I for um, hello camera. Forgot I also had a couple of the Yucca Recorvifolias. Leave those out most of the winter too. Pretty much to the same degree that I do with the windmill palms. Like 10 to 15 degrees Fahrenheit. They can go colder, just don't see a reason to risk it. You know they don't look great up there on the wall. They're actually just sitting here because I need to come in here and get the trunks cleaned up. You see that? All this stuff in here. Usually it's easier to get those with a pair of scissors and then the little nubs will start to come off on their own, help expose some of that trunk. Lots of cold hardy plants gathered together here. Also have a few more fatsias down here, the spider's web and then the camouflage. Hopefully they'll be sheltered up there. The fatsias can take a good amount of light, especially when temperatures are cooler, but they've been sitting in shade all summer, so I don't want to push it. Don't think they'd appreciate that. Probably wouldn't go over too well. He'd get shocked. He is having the time of his life. Whenever there's a gust of wind and it blows the leaves around, I just see a bore of him going chasing the leaves as they blow around on the patio. So fun when they're young and everything's so new. Got one of the mule palms over here. This one just had a prune, so it's looking kind of scrawny right now. It's fine though, sturdy plant. What does he have? What do you have, Turbo? Nothing, good boy. Also brought the tree fern over that was down in the shade. This should be a shady enough spot for it. it <laughs> this is nothing in comparison to having that big queen palm here but I'm not trying to like recreate a gorgeous garden space here. I'm more just trying to, you know, consolidate everything together so that it's easier when I have to move in the plants that can't take those cooler temperatures, which will, you know, maybe sometime in the next two or three weeks they'll have to come in. They can probably come back out. The tree fern, this is a good spot for it though because the irrigation that I had set up for the queen palm, it's pretty similar to what the fern was on down there. So I was able to just pop those bits right in there. These are tongue ferns that I planted around this back in the springtime. I don't think that made a video, made it into a video. You know, I can't, it would just take forever if I filmed everything I did out here. I thought these would be a nice understory plant for the container because they're super tough and cold hardy and they have that beautiful glossy foliage on them. These are hardy to zone four. I think this one's a native. Well, I don't think this one is actually the native type. I just don't find the type that's native to Missouri for sale very often. Usually it's the, type that's native over in, I think, Europe. Where's the hardiness? Yeah, zone four to nine, 18 inches high, 18 inches wide. Figured that would be a good understory plant to have come in here and fill the space in. It's gonna want similar conditions to the fern as long as the fern shades them enough, then they should be good. I love tongue ferns, aren't they beautiful? Just stunning. Typically evergreen here where I live, but I don't really care about that since the fern has to come inside when temperatures drop below. Yeah, I'd say 20, maybe below 25 just to be safe. 
they can defoliate and sit dormant and then totally come back from that, but it did a good amount of growing this year, so I just prefer to avoid any setbacks. And then the entire thing gets stored on the cool, dry side of the grudge. So that's the only reason I was thinking that maybe the tongue ferns might end up dying back because it's going to be pretty cool and dry, but we'll see. It's not the cold that would kill them, it's the dryness. I know that the, you wouldn't think of the tree fern as wanting the dry. It really doesn't want the dry, but it's a mealybug magnet, so I don't let it near my other plants. So it just gets to hang out in its own little spot during the winter time, gets a splash of water every now and then. I don't try and keep it growing and lush, just let it chill out. I like how that looks over there though. You know, I've had this plant for so many years and I'm sure y'all have heard me complain about it so many times, been learning uh, the process of this particular tree fern. I've had other Australian tree ferns before and they weren't very finicky. I think it's just the potting mix. I'm gonna do away with the coconut around this one next year or I shouldn't say do away with it. I'm going to heavily amend that mix with even more organic material, just compost to start off with. I did that this year and it made a tremendous difference and I think that I could have gone a little bit heavier. So it's something that's more rich and can hold on to some more moisture. Kind of like having it over here with the bamboo and everything. Not that it really matters. I don't spend a ton of time out here this time of year, but where it was down there, it was pretty hidden. And then I didn't give a before shot on this. This is where the Robolini palm and the Bird of Paradise were those were during the summertime. I just moved some more of the more cold hardy plants over here. It's a decent spot for them, fairly sheltered from the wind and from the elements. It's a mule palm right there, a little pindu right here that I've had for a long time. Might put this in the ground next year just because they grow like snails in pots, just like with the Mediterranean fan palm. So it would just give it a nice boost in its growth. And then all the lantan and stuff in there, I need to prune that back, but looks better than it did. Nothing compared to the summer, but that's all right. It's not summer. Next week and the week after, we're gonna start pulling things out. I have a bunch of bulbs to go in the ground, a few more perennials left to go in the ground. Oh no. Right after I was saying, what a good boy Turbo's been. Remember that gorgeous mossy coconut that I had, that I've had for like six years? Well, <laughs> here it is. I had it sitting up on a table, the wind must have blown it off. That's all right. I mean, it's not really, that really sucks, but I, uh, I'll take it inside and drop the different trunks into the terrariums. So the moss can at least live on that way. All right, let's go inside. Just give these a little bit of a drink, get them moist. I'll pop them back into one of these terrariums. Ugh. Lots of things budding by things. Orchids. Whole bunch of orchids inside and out there getting ready to do their thing. Love it. Love that time of year. Those cooler nighttime temperatures always get them going. And as far as out here is concerned, well, well, there isn't really much to update. I haven't done anything. Still waiting on the electrician to find out about the heater. They won't be out till next week, so have to wait for all that. Can't really get to moving and organizing the plants until I know what's going on there because I might have to move them all. So they're just hanging out for now. I do need to clear a path because tomorrow new washer and dryer is being delivered. And I am so excited because these lovelies have been broken for about a year and a half, something like that, but bro broken. They work, but just not well. There's Something up in here, they said to repair it was gonna cost more than it would to just get a new washer and dryer. So that's what's happening. It would like stop and beep, there, that air message would come up and you'd have to hit cancel and then hit start again. So like a load of laundry would sometimes take like seven or eight hours to get done. Sometimes I just pull a bar stool in here and sit down and just once a minute have to reset it through the whole cycle. Very excited to not have to mess with that again. <laughs> what are you waiting for? You're acting like you're waiting for something. You already got your treats. All right, come on, Turbo. Come on, good boy. Oh, and then there was a plant I forgot to give the update on when I moved the others inside. This was the, is, the Philodendron Gigantium Farragata. Hasn't done a ton of growing. I really didn't give it all that much light this past summer. I probably could have bumped up the light on it, but it's really nice and sturdy. If you remember, it was just over a year ago that I got this and it was just, it was a puny little thing. So it's taken root. Got some growth going on there. I think that this would appreciate a repot this winter. Bump it up into something larger with a soil that's more rich. How you doing, sweetie? You such a sweetheart. Yes, you are. That's actually everything for this vlog. I know, didn't do much in this vlog. Just kind of walked around and talked and a little bit of tidying. But that's all that's going on right now. And I'm still, I'm trying to get my voice back. So I wanted to keep this video a little bit shorter than the last one, the last vlog. I hope everybody, ooh. 
Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. I love this Anthurium. I had an entire plan. You do not need to go out there. I am not falling for that. He has learned that he can stand there, and I'll let him out, and then I watch him. He runs to the grass, and then turns around and comes right back, and he's like, all right, give me my cookies. That's not how that works, baby. That's not how that works. I had planned on setting up the tripod and, like, going through and talking while I was cutting all the things back and arranging things. That would have made the video longer, probably more entertaining, but tripod's broken. So that's fun. Get to buy a new tripod. Actually, that thing might still be under warranty. Because like I said, I don't think I've even had that one for a year. I can't believe how big he is. He's such a big baby, Turbo. Five months. Gigantic. Already taller than Topi. <laughs> That's the cookie jar. Comment down below. Say hi. Any gardening stuff still going on with y'all? I know some of you down in Florida, you're like actually planting the things that we plant in spring for your winter gardens. That's exciting. And then some of you south of the equator just about summer for you. It's almost summertime. Yeah, that's why I thought he gets weird when he's sleepy. Oh, and don't forget, if you know what the heck this old Greg plant is, let me know. I'll go ahead and Google it myself. Like I'll Google like curly epiphyllum and see what I find. Because I don't, I don't know what else it would be. It's fun though. Oh, I think it's curly Q, epiphyllum curly Q, something like that. Maybe, I don't know, what do you guys think? Since it's from Costa Farms, I'm gonna assume it's not one of the Guatemalan, so it's the like, like more rare scrambly type, unless they're curly, curly sue or curly cute. I have no idea. That's my best guess. All right. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.